Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing really well. So for any of you that are new here, I'm Becca. I'm a professional pet portrait and wildlife artist specialising in coloured pencils um, and like realistic drawings of animals. So we've been making our way through this realistic badger on drafting film. Um, I have left the link to part one in the video description below. So if you want to start from the start, then you can do. I've also left the line drawing, the materials list and the reference photo as well. So you can follow all the way through as I'm kind of demonstrating and talking through my process. So we're going to kind of um, carry on from where we left off in the previous part. I know I talked a lot about um, the main things to do with drafting film in the previous part, basically saying how it's completely smooth. It doesn't hold as many layers as Fabriano paper does. Um, so you kind of need to be a bit more specific and careful with the colours that you do choose to use. Um, kind of pick out colours that you can actually see in the reference photo, whereas with hot press papers that can hold a lot of layers, we can spend time building up colour and adding like so many layers, like layer after layer after layer, whereas on here it's very, very different. So how we approach our drawing style and techniques is kind of very different as well. So I've picked out the cold grey 5 polychromo and I'm going to add this to the entirety of the black fur just above where we finished off in part two and also into the ear as well. You want to keep everything super delicate and light pressured and I also find that if you use like the flattest side of your tip um, of the pencil it gives you a much softer line and a bit more of an even coverage as well so you can almost shade in that area a lot quicker. So I'm working from the edge of where we finished off previously and just bringing that up, kind of shading in back and forth motions in the same direction as the fur, taking it up the ear. So towards the edges, you kind of want to do some elongated lines just to help merge that black fur with the white fur. Obviously, we'll draw that white fur in a little bit later on. So you want to work into the ear as well. You want to flick up at the top of the head as well, make that fur look really thick and kind of wispy towards the ends. And then I'm kind of flicking back down on the diagonal as I'm going like in towards that white strip of fur in the middle of the face along that edge. So yeah, I talked about um, quite a lot about drafting film in the previous part. Um, so if this is the first time that you've ever tried it, then do let me know how you're finding it in the comments below, because I'd love to hear what you think. At first, I was a bit unsure on drafting film because I'm so used to working on like a hot press paper like Fabriano. Um, it's just such a different texture. It takes a lot of time to get used to. And I think your techniques drastically have to change like so much that yeah it does take a bit of practice and a bit of getting used to but hopefully I'm kind of talking you through this and demonstrating how 
to do that. Just my main advice would just be to keep everything super controlled and delicate. And just because something looks darker or it's starting to pick up a little bit of that grain from the Fabriano paper that's layered underneath, like we've got here, um, don't be tempted to kind of press down harder. Keep that pressure super light throughout. And you'll find that even, you know, as we keep progressing and adding more layers and gradually building up that colour and contrast, um, it'll, everything will just completely blend together and smooth out anyway. That's the beauty of this paper. Like you don't have to put much effort in or much pressure in for it to blend and just look like realistic. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave that there with the cold grey five. We've just added a bit of a like medium grey just to kind of map out that black fur on the top right hand side of the head and in the ear. Next up, I'm going to use the Payne's Grey, which is a slightly darker grey. And you just want to work into that black fur again, just making that colour a bit darker. If you look at this part of the fur in the reference photo as well, there's some areas that are just ever so slightly lighter than others. Um, and it all just depends on, you know, how and where the light is kind of hitting that fur. Um, so for those areas that are slightly darker, a little bit paler, you might just want to release your pressure ever so slightly, just like brush it across the surface, um, just so it's a little bit paler than everywhere else. And again, I'm working with that flat side of my pencil to get that really soft line. You want to work into the ear as well. Thank you. 
So I've kept my pencil super controlled throughout and kept it really delicate. And like I said just before, that's probably my main advice for when you're drawing on drafting film. Um, as you can probably see, it literally just glides across the surface, unlike with other papers where you've really got to work it in there. Um, I'm so used to working on Fabriano Artistico paper, the hot pressed one, um, which is quite smooth, but it does have a really fine tooth to it. So it holds so many layers, which means that you can really, you know, work that into the into those little grooves of the paper. But it does ache your hand after a while, whereas drafting film is just so effortless. It just glides across the surface like, I don't know, it's kind of weird to explain because it doesn't even really feel like paper. Um, so yeah, let me know how you find it if you are working on drafting film. So I think I'm going to leave that there with the Payne's Grey. And I'm going to go in now with the Dark Indigo just to get some of those subtle kind of blue tones going on at this point as like a acting as a bit of an undertone really so I'm probably going to add this everywhere in both you know those shadowy areas and those lighter parts of the fur as well just kind of tint the whole thing make it look a bit more blue and again keep your pressure super light like that and then I'm actually going to go in with the dark sepia which is a really dark brown colour and mainly work into those shadowy areas. I think with both black fur and white fur it's really important to have a mixture of like cooler tones like we've got down already and warmer tones like some subtle browns um, and just like warmer colours I think having a mixture of both makes it look more realistic and having more of one than the other can almost make it look quite flat. So I think it's important to have both um, like cooler tones and warmer tones in there, especially when it comes to black and white fur. So at this point, it's kind of picking up quite a lot of that grain from the Fabriano paper layered underneath. Um, but that doesn't mean you need to press on harder, just keep your pressure like similar throughout the entire drawing I'd say. If knowing how much or how little pressure is something that you struggle with when drawing, which is probably one of the hardest things to kind of figure out, it just takes so much practice. Um, but if that is something that you struggle with then you might actually really like drafting film because there's not much differentiation between your pressure. It's kind of very similar throughout. Um, so yeah, definitely give it a try. I'd try this paper anyway. If you've never tried it before, definitely give it a try. I absolutely love it. I know I keep banging on about it, but I actually love it, which is very strange because I know a lot of people hate it. It's just one of those really, down to personal preference. A lot of people love like the Clairefontaine pastel mat and a lot of people hate it because it's too textured. Um, but yeah, I think you can get some great results on any paper surface that you're working on. It's just how you kind of apply those techniques to that particular surface. I think trying a range of papers and, you know, getting a feel for your pencils and different surfaces, really figuring out, you know, what you like to draw on is also a good way to help you improve as well. Just trying different things and adapting your techniques. So 
I'm just adding a few more like elongated hairs into that white section of fur. And we've kind of done that already coming down this section, kind of flicking on the diagonal back down into this white strip of fur coming down the face. Like that. Next up I'm going to use the shade Violet Grey which is actually a luminance pencil and I'm just going to work into these lightest sections of the black fur. So basically where the light is directly hitting it and it's making it look a bit brighter, bringing out some of those lighter colours. This is like the perfect kind of purpley, fairly neutral tone to work into the black with. I think black in general black fur always has an element of like blues and purples in there and browns as well and it's important to include those colors when and where you can so again just lightly working into this section I think in general polychromos probably work a lot better on this surface than the luminance pencils do. Luminance pencils are predominantly wax based so on this particular surface because there's not loads of like tooth and grit for it to grip onto it feels quite kind of thick to add a layer onto this surface. I don't know it's a bit of a weird kind of texture it feels when you're drawing with it um, but I just love the colours with luminance pencils there's some really lovely like neutral tones like this that the polychromos just don't seem to have um polychromos are predominantly oil based so they're a much harder pencil and they're really good for detail and they've got so many vibrant colors so it's really good for like building up tonal value but for anything else i do like to use luminance pencils they work particularly well on the hot press papers um probably more than drafting film like i said uh, the Faber-Castell polychromos probably do work best on drafting film but just little tints of luminance pencils here and there is always fine. I just love some of the colours that they do. So something like that. Next up I'm going to go in with the black just to make those shadowy areas really quite dark like in the ear and again just because it is so dark it doesn't mean you need to apply a harder pressure. Keep your pressure fairly light and just add kind of a few more layers on top of it if you want something to look really quite dark. And this is also where you can start using more of like the pointy side of your pencil to create some really fine lines um, which will represent those individual hairs in the black fur so we can start building up a bit more of that texture and detail.
So then you might want to go back in with some of the colours that you've already used, like the dark sepia. Just add a few more brown tones in there, like just around the shadows. So these lighter parts in the black fur, we could go in with the craft knife slice tool to kind of pull some of those out, but I think it will be too intense and too much of a contrast. So to keep those highlights looking quite soft, you want to go in with the silver grey luminance pencil. And it doesn't matter if you've got a blunt pencil or a sharp pencil, mine's really short and stubby because I use it all the time. But you just want to go along some of these lines that we can already see again with a light pressure and just elongate them slightly, go over them to brighten them as well. So we've got more of like that shiny coat from where the light is directly hitting the fur. Just going to add a little bit to the top of the head. You might also want to go in with the White Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarelle Pencil, which is my favourite white pencil ever. It's so pigmented and it kind of shows up so well over multiple layers of colour pencil. So next up I'm going to focus on the white fur at the top of the ear and on the right hand side of the face. I think maybe that's all we're going to do for part three, we'll see how we get on. Um, so you want to go in with your palest colours. So I've picked out the cold grey one and the warm grey one. So like I said before, it's important to have a mixture of both cooler and warmer tones. 
think I'm going to start by using the cold grey one and just map out like the top of the ear so we can see that edge a little bit more clearly and almost kind of work over the edge of that black fur kind of dragging that pigment slightly into the white fur so it's merging a lot nicer So I'm again using the really flat, like blunter side of my pencil just to get that really soft edge. And then whilst I've still got this in my hand, I'm also going to work into this white fur on the right hand side as well. So I'm going to start by mapping out the edge really lightly. There's like a strip of like a slightly darker shadow down the center of this bit of fur which we kind of already have mapped out with that pan pastel layered underneath so we can kind of see where it is so i'm going to go over that with the cold gray one And then the fur, as it goes round the edge, it kind of goes from pointing outwards and gradually points more upwards towards the ear. So definitely pay attention to the direction change. And you want to kind of flick your pencil at the end of each of your pencil strokes as well to get that really wispy like finish to each of the tufts that make up the fur. And then I'm going to switch to the warm grey one. Basically, you know, work into the same sort of areas, but this will add a lovely, like, neutral, pale beige colour to that white fur, make it look slightly off white. I'm kind of working along that edge and then also this kind of strip of shadow in the middle as well.
I'm going to add a tiny little bit of the pink white luminance pencil just like around the ear. I think there's an ever so slightly like beigey pinky tone to that fur. Maybe also just underneath the ear as well as it merges in with that white fur. But nothing more than that. And then you want to go in with your buff titanium luminance pencil, which is that really pale kind of creamy yellowy colour. I'm going to apply this to that kind of middle darker area on the right hand side of the face in that white fur. Just adding a little bit all the way down. Maybe a tiny bit in the ear as well, like that. I think I'm also going to go in with the silver grey luminance pencil again and just add a little bit more of that like blue colour to the top edge of the ear and also the edge of the face on the right hand side as well. Just to make it look a little bit more blue, add that subtle tint. Remembering to flick each of my pencil strokes, keeping them really controlled and like delicate. Gonna add a tiny little bit at the bottom here as well and if you wanted to you could also go in with the light cobalt blue which is a bit more vibrant and literally just letting it brush across the surface applying like no pressure at all really you can just apply that in the same sort of areas to increase that bluey tint and like a little bit goes a long way once you kind of take a step back and look at everything you realize how kind of vibrant that is so keep it super light and just literally let it brush across that surface keep it as subtle as you can but it'll just bring out more of those blue tints in the fur like that Next up I'm going to go in with the warm grey too, so a shade darker and you want to work into this strip coming down the right hand side of the face. Just start drawing in some like darker lines that are going to stand out against the rest of that white fur. Again I'm not increasing my pressure any at all keeping it quite light. These lines will also help to kind of show you the direction of the fur as well. And it's slightly going down like that as it's coming back down the face. So I've had quite a busy week to be honest. I feel like I've not sat down and recorded any of this badger since, since like the start of last week. So it's been nice just to um, do a bit more progress on it this morning. Um, yesterday, I, I say busy week, we're only on Tuesday, but yesterday I went to London uh, to drop off a piece of work for a gallery because it, it had been pre-selected for the summer exhibition. It's the Green and Stone Gallery in Chelsea. Um, I've never exhibited there before, but I was, like it was just such a nice little gallery it was in a really good area um it's just a bit of a pain going on the train to london and coming back like all in one day it's quite a lot um it used to be like two hours 15 or something and now it's like three hours 15 i don't know why they've added more stops in or it goes a different route or something um so it is quite long i know a lot of people will obviously travel a lot further than that um but yeah i mean I don't mind being on the train because I can still work from my phone. I could take my MacBook and 
uh, do some work on there as well but yeah so I took my massive stag which if some of you follow me on Instagram you've probably seen it it's absolutely ginormous and that's the one that got chosen so I had to carry that on the train and all the way through London which wasn't ideal but I mean yeah so I'm hearing back today actually whether it's being selected or not for the exhibition if it's not then I have to literally go back to London tomorrow and pick it up again and if it is then it'll be exhibited throughout the whole of August so fingers crossed it is um so I don't have to make the journey again <laughs> but no I'm quite anxious I'm literally just sat here waiting for this email whilst recording this I keep like looking at the top of my phone seeing if I've got any notifications but so far I've got nothing so yeah we shall see um so I've not even told you what I've got in with I've got in with now the warm grey three which is again is the shade darker and I'm just going over some of these lines to define them a little bit more I think really emphasising the darker details that you can see in white fur really helps to, you know, give it the detail and uh, kind of definition that it needs. It's hard to kind of pick up details when you're working on such a light coloured fur. There's not like a lot of details going on, so you just need to kind of emphasise and exaggerate almost what you can see. And that's also the case for the colours that you can see as well, really emphasise those subtle ones. Um, like we've added those kind of blue tints in there earlier. Just adding a few little sort of beige toned hairs just along that edge where it meets that black fur. Might just add a little bit to the top of the ear as well. The next colour that I'm going to use is the Raw Umber 50% Luminance Pencil. This is like a similar colour to that Warm Grey 3, but it's slightly more of like a greeny khaki colour. And if you look at the reference photo, there is an element of that greeny colour um, kind of bouncing back up onto the fur. The badger, if you look at its surroundings, is surrounded by like a lot of greenery. So maybe it's in like a field or a forest or something. Um, so particularly with white fur, whatever the animal's surroundings are, often, you know, the colour of that will be reflecting back onto the white fur. So, yeah, that's probably why we've got an element of green. But this green, this raw umber 50% is so subtle and neutral still that it's not like an overpowering green. It'll just blend nicely with those colours we've already got down so far. So I'm mainly just working into that middle kind of strip. like that. Then you want to go back in with either like your black or your Payne's grey or your dark sepia. I think I'm going to go in with the Payne's grey um, and just again elongate some of these black hairs from the edge and bring them back into that lighter fur. And there's also if you zoom in there's some like really fine wispy hairs as well kind of like little whiskers or just flyaways that are slightly longer going into that white fur. Also want to draw back in some of those wispy hairs at the top of the black fur, just at the base of the ear that might have got covered.
And I'm just going to finish off by going back in with the warm grey three. Just bringing that shadow in a little bit. If we look at the proportions of that white strip at the bottom of the face, it's a lot thinner than I've got here. I'm just bringing that in a little bit. Like that. So I think I'm going to leave that there for part three. Um, in part four, we're going to be basically doing the same thing on the left hand side, but maybe do a bit more. We'll also fill in this top bit of white fur as well. Um, I really don't like how that's just, <laughs> it looks like a little eye mask. We just wanted to use the cold grey five again, just to make a star on the rest of that black fur on the left hand side, then you can do. make it look a little bit softer for when we start with um, this section on the left hand side. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed part three. Uh, we've got another kind of big chunk done there. I feel like the, the hardest bit is building up that black fur and also, you know, white fur isn't easy either, but white fur just doesn't need as many colours or as many layers, so it's a lot quicker to do. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Like I said at the start, I've left the line drawing, the full materials list and the reference photo in the video description below so you can follow through from the start and I've also left the link to part one as well. Um, let me know what you think of this tutorial, let me know what you think of drafting film if that's what you're working on like me um, and yeah, I'll be back very shortly with part four.